Boxing London 2017 as the red and the blue corners make their way to the ring. 13 fights scheduled on the bill this evening. The white collar boxing London light heavyweight title on the line as well. And of course the inaugural Challenge Cup. Two semi-finals leading to a final later on in the night. So a couple of gentlemen will box twice in one evening. Amazing achievement. Big Challenge Cup sat ringside and one of these men will be walking home with that tonight that's Ed Cornick I beg your pardon it's Joe Austin Noel Ratzigan Nick Terrett and Stephen Christian all vying for the Challenge Cup here at the London Irish Centre in Camden Square so all the teams coming in some have boxed here before some are making their debut this evening a 10 week training camp starting of days after the last show back here in March. My word, what a lot to learn in just 10 weeks with some of these people in the ring in front of you. Remember all of the bouts being contested over three two-minute rounds, except for the light heavyweight title bout tonight. That would be contested over four two-minute rounds. Task kicking off the night, being the first one down the ramp, and that task goes to Rosanna Yeager. Calls herself a classic Kiwi nanny over here in the UK for a couple of years. Does a lot of travelling in Europe, and what a reception she's come here for. Sounds like she's in front of the home crowd. She starts in the red corner this evening. The first contestant. Julie Taylor making her way to the ring and that's one thing you can always guarantee here at the London Irish Centre in Camden Square is that the noise levels start loud and they just get louder and louder and louder. Julie Taylor's box here before and she knows the ropes well. Looking pretty relaxed too in the, in the uh, blue corner. Of 
So I have three two minute rounds to kick us off the London Irish Centre in Camden Square this evening. Introducing to you firstly, finding out of the red corner, she's from Mount Mongolui. Referee Seamus Dunn administering the final instructions to the two boxers in the ring. Rosanna Yeager in the red corner, Julie Taylor in the blue. Immediately noticed the height difference and reach difference between the two ladies. Rosanna Yeager, good half a foot taller there. So the bell sounds for round number one. Will Rosanna Yeager be able to make that height and reach difference count? Of course, the prerogative for the taller fighter is to try and keep the boxing a little bit longer range, keep the arms pumping out. And of course, Julie Taylor, being the shorter fighter, will try and get on the inside and maybe unsettle Rosanna Yeager, who's made a very good start. She's coming in behind the jab, jabbing to the body and then throwing the right hand upstairs. That's good work from her, although Taylor looking unflustered. She has boxed here before, remember. This is familiar territory for her. She's just taking her time, taking a little bit longer to warm into the process. It's Jaeger again, coming forward behind that jab. Taylor got off a jab of her own. First shot that she's landed in the contest so far. But again, Jaeger going to the body and then the head, just mixing up the levels. And that's important because going to the body, just drawing the eye line of your opponent and sometimes the gloves down, which can leave a gap up top for her to exploit. And she's doing that well, but she's got to be careful. Because as we saw there, Taylor just managing to box her way off the ropes. Came back with a couple of counter punches of her own to box her way out of the corner. Well, nice jab again from Taylor. So Jaeger, just a couple of reminders that she's not going to have it all her own way. Comes in again behind that jab and then just moves her feet back out of range. And this is good from Jaeger, just maintaining the distance. Now opens up, good two punch combination. Oh, a lovely stiff jab from Taylor, good work from her. Now she goes to the body, then the head. Taste of her own medicine for Rosanna Jaeger at the end of her. A largely positive first round for the lady in the red corner. Ralph Taylor was on the end of a long jab on several occasions. Just warmed to the task towards the end of round number one. Remember three two-minute rounds here at White Collar Boxing London without... So we were into the world title fight, the uh, White Collar Boxing title bout later on. The light heavyweight title, that will be contested over four two-minute rounds. While it can seem like uh, a long time from outside the ropes, you've got a dollar, it can go pretty quickly when you're inside there. Seamus Dunn, refereed thousands of amateur contests, having been a top amateur himself. Round two. His prerogative is to keep the boxes safe. That's priority number one. So Jaeger again, coming in behind that jab, lands the right hand behind it. Taylor again, responding with her back to the ropes. That's what Taylor needs to do. You see, just a little feint with her head, try and dip and slip past the jab and then get herself on the inside. She's a little shorter in height and shorter of limb as well, so to box at long range for her would presumably be detrimental. Got to try and get on the inside and rough Rosanna Yeager up a little bit. 
Yeah, you could just look briefly to her left, to her corner man, giving her advice as she walks into a jab. Nice stiff right hand there. One of the memorable shots of the contest so far. It's Taylor waiting with her back to the ropes, eats a jab again. Just a little bit static with the head. Taylor, oh, a lovely counter right hand. And that's better from Taylor now, just slipping the jab, starting to find her opponent's rhythm. Right hand to the body, left hook to the head from Taylor. Better round from the lady in blue. Good head movement from her as well there. Just made Jaeger pause for thought on occasion now. And picked off on a couple of these exchanges as Taylor goes again to the body with a jab. Better one-two from Jaeger that time. Good to see Taylor just using the feet to keep out of range. It's not always about head movement. You take the space and timing with the feet. And that's good as well, just using the parry to... And Jaeger then came in with a combination, so really interesting little clash of styles developing through round number two. And quick as a flash, we are staring round three squarely in the face. Much, much better round from Taylor. I will say boxing is about making the adjustments from round to round, taking your time to find the measure and rhythm of your opponent. Don't get all that long in the ring here at White Collar Boxing London. Remember, just the three two-minute rounds. Taylor certainly made those adaptions and perhaps that's a reflection that she's been in this ring more than once. Just get the distinct impression that whoever can finish the stronger in round number three will get the nod on the scorecards. Ladies touch gloves and away we go. The third and final round. Rosanna Jaeger in the red corner, Julie Taylor in the blue. Jaeger, the aggressor, coming forward. Nice stiff double right hand lands. Taylor rode it well though. Now she's looking to go on the offensive, goes low with the jab. Taylor's been sharp with the feet so far. Every time Jaeger comes forward, Taylor just inches back, gives herself a bit of space. And again, they're just parrying away. Nice counter right over the jab, but didn't get her feet out of range in time. And just ate a, a right hand back from Jaeger. So tip for tat in that exchange. Jam again. Not a great deal in this round. That's one that could be crucial as Taylor flashes the right hand. Just round the side of the guard of Jaeger. Good work from the lady in blue. She parries the jabs and counters with the right hand and then a sneaky left hook as she moves uh, her weight back into some space. Really good work from Taylor. Around about half a minute to go in this third and final round. And now Jaeger trying to take the impetus. Lands a couple of shots in a combination on the ropes. It's Taylor now moving around to her left-hand side. It's been patient, calculated work from Taylor. Yeah, that's a physical disadvantage in this one, but so far, it hasn't gone against her. She's boxed very, very well indeed. Counter right again from Taylor, and a second. Really strong finish for Taylor. Portion of the contest to Jaeger, the latter to Taylor. We will go to the scorecards. The question is, who's taking it?
Jackson. And at the end of those three concluding rounds, your referee has scored this contest 30 points to 28 points in favour of your winner, fighting out of the red corner. Tough task, these men in the Challenge Cup have got ahead of them this evening. Hard enough boxing three two minute rounds at this level. And one of these men will be doing it twice. Joe Austin there, the win last year. This will be his second WCBL fight. Got to lose two stone to compete in this one. So he says that in itself has been a huge challenge. Well, he looks in terrific shape. Very best of luck to Joe Austin this evening. And now please welcome to the Maroon Corner from Galway Island, Noel Ratiga. A familiar face of Noel Rattigan moved to London three and a half years ago, works in the construction industry. This is his fourth contest at White Collar Boxing London. And certainly will be his biggest challenge today if he wins this contest and goes through to tonight's final. Good luck, the Irishman, Noel Rattigan in the blue corner. Austin in the red corner, Noel Rattigan in the blue. The Challenge Cup final awaits. Austin operating out of the southpaw stance and Rattigan too. So an interesting mix of the lefties. Don't often see two southpaws in the same ring. And these two men knowing that the quicker they can get each other out of there, the more time that they can have to rest could we have an early stoppage on the cars? Nice long left hand from Rattigan, lands early. Austin just hanging on, did that one just wobble the legs of the man in red? Seamus Dunn, he's gonna have to be on his game, the referee, as Rattigan again comes forward. We know he's tough, the Irishman. Can really take a shot as he stalks forward again, just slips out the way of a jab and muscles Austin onto the ropes again. 
flatters that long left hand. I think it came off the shoulder, though. Well, that's crude stuff from Rattigan so far, but he's a man that's got the body language of intent in his work. As Austin now just comes back momentarily. I think he's had his first breather of the contest after a pretty frantic start. Just walked into somewhat of a whirlwind. As he tries to get the jab working with his back to the ropes. Rattigan just keeps pouring forwards. And the two exchange heavy blows. Well, there's one thing that this contest doesn't scream, it's economy. And I don't know whether these two men have thought about what's coming later, but well, in terms of leaving something left in the tank, I don't know how much they're going to have to give if this one goes the distance. Rattigan pouring forward, putting the pressure on Austin, who just grimaces by our ringside position. Rattigan's corner man, Mide de Degbe, shouting on. De Degbe, 2-0 as a professional in the Queensbury League, a former white collar boxing champion himself. And he puts that stool down in no time for Rattigan. And these two men have just poured everything into this opening round. And given that one of them's got to go through and try and recover for a final, I don't know that that's been the most sensible approach by either man. corners would have given some advice about saving a bit of energy for later and a more economical approach it seems like if any advice has been administered it's been forgotten almost instantaneously as Rattigan pours forward Austin desperately tries to fend him off and swing back already a bit of blood from the mouth of Rattigan as Austin lands a two punch combination Rattigan swings back at him it's a little wild and, and wide too. It seems as if Rattigan has decided that, like it or not, this one's going to be attritional. And he's just going to try and walk his man down and outwork him. And so far, so good. As Austin takes three or four clean, he's in a bit of trouble there. The referee Seamus Dunn. Well, I thought maybe there would be a standing eight count, and Rattigan comes forward again. He's Austin beginning to wilt under the pressure from the Irishman. He's looking really in a bit of trouble as the eight count is administered. Good work from the referee. He had a look the first time round, decided to give Austin the benefit of the doubt, but the moment he waved box on, Rattigan just started pouring the pressure back on. Another two or three shots landed clean. Austin desperately trying to hold on, but he's unable to do so frustration from the man in red but really he's been on the end of a beating through this first minute or so unbelievably 15 seconds to go it's flown by for us ringside but for Austin it would have seemed like an age as Rattigan feeling like he could maybe get an early stoppage and referee Seamus Dunn has said exactly that Austin looking incredibly disappointed and whilst it was an uneconomical approach from Noel Rattigan, the Irishman. Certainly, he saved himself a round's worth of recovery going into the final against the winner of Nick Terry and Stephen Christensen. Will that pay dividends later on? Certainly a high-risk strategy, but for Rattigan, perhaps it's paid off. Joe Austin unfortunately walked into somewhat of a whirlwind in that first couple of rounds just wasn't able to quite live with the pressure from the experienced Rattigan 
who can now go and rest up, get a bit of massage, some ice on the lip, try and get himself in tip-top nick for the final later on this evening. Many of you will recognise the theme music of Special K, Kel Brook, who came up short against Errol Spence a couple of weeks ago. Nick Terrett will be hoping for better luck and a better performance. Works in advertising, been boxing on charity events for around five years now. And with a baby on the way, he says this is going to be his last fight. So what a better way to hang up the gloves than the four-man challenge cup. And he's a man of considerable skill in the boxing ring bang a bit too and he knows his way around and well this is his last fight and it's been a real pleasure watching him over the last few years and good luck to him Electrician by day, a gambler by night, and he's taking a big gamble here. Steve Christian undefeated him, says he plans on keeping it that way. Big smile on his face, but he'll know that he's potentially got a very long night ahead of him as well this evening. So. Two boxers who know their way around the white collar ring. And so this is our WCBL Challenge Cup. Semi-final number two is about to be contested over three two-minute rounds. Introducing to you firstly fighting out of the red corner from Elephant Castle. So the second semi-final of the Challenge Cup. Steve Christian in the blue corner, Nicky Terra in the red. As we say, two men that know their way around the white collar ring. Terra in that kind of Philly shell stance with a glove high up by the right chin. That awkward, low, but snappy jab. And he can bang a bit, Terra. You better believe it. Christian will feel that power early if one of these shots lands. Just might get his attention. Terry just firing that jab from down by the hip. So difficult to read. Just comes out of the way of the peripheral vision. And so far, a good start for the man in red. And Christian just hunting him down, walking forwards, just looking for his opportunity. Just glancing right hand landed from the man in blue. 
here, the heavy handedness of Terrett, those thudding shots come through, but he's on the back foot so far, and the power hasn't yet deterred Christian, who comes forward with a swinging left hook, clips Terrett on top of the head. Terrett responds with a straight right hand. And just trying to maintain that distance with the jab, that's his prerogative. Christian pretty high and tight with the guard, and that leaves a gap down the middle for that nice straight jab of Terrick. Good work to the body though from Christian. And already in stark contrast to the first semi-final, much more economy of movement and shot selection from these two men, perhaps saving a little bit for the long haul. Nice work again from Terrick, and although Christian is tucking up high and tight, the uppercut sneaks through. Crashing right hook to the body from the man in blue, but Terrett again a little busier on the inside. Ah, really, really nice work from Nicky Terrett in the red corner, boxing well on the outside, sharp and precise with his shots. Good selection of work too. And while Steve Christian has been hunting him down, he's got to start to get to work and let his hands go a little bit more. And so far, Terrett doesn't seem to be too bothered by the pressure. Two rounds to go here. And one of these two men, remember, will meet Noel Rattigan in the final later on this evening. start in round number one and he's determined to keep that momentum moving forwards and now Christian knows that he's got to try and work his way back into this one comes forward behind the jab makes Terry miss with the right hand and now Christian coming forward he's going to make a fight of this just switch his stance momentarily in a showmanship from Christian as he tucks up the Terrett now working through the guard again, that short uppercut. Terrett's just got to keep his work compact and tight, doesn't want to get too wayward with his work and leave himself exposed to the counter. Well, that good start from him has just sparked Christian into life. He knows he's got to try and make something of this. right hand again that right hand to the body lands well Terrett just with the right hand round the side of the guard just perhaps the, uh, the first uh, signs of fatigue for the man in red starting to settle in fires that jab just gives himself a bit of space in the corner but as he steps forward walks into one himself Sometimes you see a boxer just biding their time, walking forwards, eating a few shots, trying to wear their opponent down, make them punch themselves out. And was this the tactic from Steve Christian? Just starting to find his timing and range through the latter part of this second round. There goes the bell. Much more competitive second round, arguably around for the man in blue and that leaves us the commentary desk at least depends how the judges are seeing it of course but that potentially leaves us level going into the third and final round It's going to be the man with a higher work rate. It's going to take this. Steve Christian didn't quite do enough in the first round. Nicky Terrett didn't do enough in the second. So nice punch variety. He's got to keep that jab pumping out when he's 
on the back foot moving around the outside of the ring really good sportsmanship between these two men throughout which has been lovely to see but they're going to have to put that on hiatus for the next two minutes at least and it's Steve Christian who just got a bit of fire in the soles of his feet now as he looks a little sharper and twitchier as he comes forward this combination from Terrick but Christian has covered a lot of those shots blocked them on the shoulders and the arms and the elbows Swings and misses, just catches Terry with a little flicky southpaw jab. Again, that right hand to the body. They will start to take their toll, perhaps later on, if Nicky Terry does get to the final. Christian to switch into southpaw, ducking in. Fires a left hook through the guard, then that right to the body again. He's a little square on, just needs to be sure he doesn't get caught. Switch hitting, just causing a moment of befuddlement for Nicky Terrick. Just not looking quite as assured as he was through the beginning of the contest. Fires the jab out, but Christian slips at that time, lands the jab of his own, then the right cross. Terrick blocking and trying to counter, but it's all Christian as we draw to the final moment of round number three. Round 30 seconds to go here. Terrick trying to push the jab out, but the snap and the sting has just dissipated from his shots, and that's allowing Christian the opportunity to come in behind his own jab, set up his own combinations. What has Terrick got left? Nice right hand sneaks through, but again Christian marches forward. Terrick beginning to just feel the pace, jabs through the guard of Christian. Christian responds, good combination for the man in blue. The left hook. But he has been the aggressor through three, and he that carries the momentum to the belt. And we will go to the judges' scorecards to find out which of these two gentlemen, who embrace with great sportsmanlike qualities, will be making it through to the Challenge Cup final later on this evening to face Noel Rattigan, who no doubt is already backstage resting up. Terrific contest to watch. Now, Nicky Terrett looks a little despondent going back to his corner, started so well. But if this is his last contest, he can be proud of the way he's boxed over the last few years. I've seen him two or three times. Technically, really nice boxer to watch. And I'm sure he'll save at this moment, whatever the result. So we will go now to Peter Lowe, our master of ceremonies, for the particulars.
to first of the group corner. From Twyford, it's Ian, the animal. Three two-minute rounds, Ian Lee in the red corner, Michael Gazette in the blue. Lee has boxed here a few times before. Gazette said getting involved in any kind of sport has been something always that's inspired him. He said life is about creating experiences that you'll remember forever, and tonight certainly is that. Men of a similar stature, the tall, rangy, nice glancing right hand from Lee, landed there. Because <laughs> just a little short with his shots, got to try and get the feet in a bit closer before he throws. Got a nice wide base. Often the, uh, often the feet are a mark of whether you're in range or not. Some people would look and think, well, it's the hands, but actually it's how close your front foot is to your opponent that determines whether or not you're in punching range. And sometimes you'll hear trainers say, get your feet in before you throw, and that's all to do with timing and distance. So Gazette so far still working his out, and Ian Lee is... Uh, Rarely been a static target, just uh, as I say that, just momentarily pauses on the ropes and that might just give Gazette an opportunity to throw and land, although he's countered well by Lee, who just tucks up in the corner. And now Gazette begins to open up, that landed there, and that hurt Lee. Lee trying to battle his way off the ropes, landed a short left hook, Gazette comes in with a crashing right hand. <laughs> whilst he didn't have a great deal of success at distance and in the centre of the ring, when he got up close and got Lee pinned to the ropes, he was getting the upper hand of the exchanges. So an interesting first round. Key is, well, Michael Gazette and his corner have spotted that. Will they be able to advise him? Get your man pinned on the ropes, walk him down, cut the ring off. Don't just follow him around in circles. Make the space small for him. The less space you give him to work, the quicker you'll get him in the corner or against those ropes, and that's where you can do the damage. The mercy for Ian Lee, he will know that keeping this one at space and in the centre will play to his advantage. So, Bit of cat and mouse here. We'll see which corner and which boxer through round two makes the more astute adjustments. Gazette already trying to cut the ring off, just mirroring the footwork of Lee, trying to make that space smaller, and this is what he needs to do. Get his man onto the ropes, and Lee pretty smartly holds and walks his man back to the centre. He knows that's not where he needs to be. So smart adjustments from Gazette already through round number two. As he works his way in again. Lee trying to keep him a little longer with the jab. Gazette swings and misses, just telegraphed the right hand there, a touch. Sharp left hook from Lee. Working away with the lead hand, the man in red. He's trying to maintain that distance and space. Shoots the right hand down the middle. 
See Gazette again cutting the ring off. This is better footwork from the man in blue. Just found himself following Lee around the ring at times in the first round. But now he's cutting the space off, trying to pin him on the ropes or in the corner. Gazette again, just double jabbing his way in, looking for an opening. Now might find the target a bit easier, just misses with the uppercut, landed the left hook. Lee took it well. 20 seconds to go here, round number two. Lee looking a little pensive. Goes the bell for the end of the second round and good adjustments made by the blue corner. Starting to create a little bit less space for Ian Lee to move and to operate. And that's just meant he's been under a little more sustained pressure, though he's counterpunched well. He's still pretty finely poised. take the impetus but now back on the back foot just pops a jab out through the guard of Michael Gazette who comes in with a left hook right hand combination good work for the man in blue now beginning to let the hands go Gazette's been hunting him down. He's got to be wary of those sharp shape counters from Lee. Just occasionally they come through the guard and give him a, a sharp reminder. Being the aggressors all very well, but if you walk onto those shots, you can magnify the impact of them. Gazette again now with Lee pinned to the ropes. Lee just trying to maintain that distance with the, the jab, the stiff jab. And now the right hand. the end of round number three and the end of the contest comes to a close and Michael Gazette leans on the ropes in I imagine a bit of relief as much as anything and it's all gone to plan he boxed pretty well nearly in the corner he's done this a few times before he'll be a little bit more used to the process and oh, we'll go to the judges scorecards momentarily Good uh, sportsmanship between the two men.
29.628 in favour of your winner, fighting out of the Blue Corner. Three two minute rounds, Julian Luck in the red corner. And Wayne Mensa in the blue. Luck, uh, London are born and raised, currently living over in South Norwood. The training basin, camp location for the Olympic light heavyweight bronze medalist and now professional Joshua Barazzi. Just turned over with match of sport last week and Luck was, well, he was wobbled early by some pretty sharp shots from Mensa. Will Mensa want to pounce on this? No stranger to the white collar ring. Box at the Head and Neck Cancer Foundation dinner last year over in Westminster, and he's made a really sharp start. He seems to be hurting Luck with every shot that he lands. Luck, pensive, tentative circling around the outside of the ring, trying to keep things at long range. Oh, Mensa lands a crashing right hand again, starts to open up, but he's got luck in a bit of trouble here. Seamus Dunn having a close look at the man in red. His priority, the safety of all the combatants here this evening. Just signs that luck is struggling a bit with the power of Wayne Mensa. again just narrowly avoided the counter right lands the jab Mensa continuing to walk him down lands a right and that wobbled luck again 
10 seconds to go here in the first round. Luck has shown real grit and guts and resolve to see it out. Keep boxing behind the jab. There is the end of that first round and just the legs of Luck are not quite steady underneath him. Mensa will have taken a lot of confidence from that opening round. It seemed that every shot he landed, especially the right hands, were sending Luck back onto his heels and giving him problems. Luck is uh, a nurse working in the A&E department. He's been training non-stop for this, so he really will want to try and show everything that he's worked so hard for this evening. As Mike Tyson most famously once said, Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face and just sometimes you can get in with an opponent that shots just shake you right to the soles of your feet. Everything you've learned, everything you know can just go out the window. But having said that, Luck boxed all the way through that round. He didn't lose his form, didn't lose his shape. But of course, the way Mensa, he'll know that one flush shot really could change the game here. Will he be searching for that shot? Lands the right again. I've got luck in a bit of trouble and the standing eight count comes in. The legs just a little bit stiffer than they might be. Just trying to bounce up and down, just get a bit of blood back into them. And Ray Mensa is going to pounce on it. He's going to be looking for the big shot. Stalking, cutting off the ring, trying to set everything up with the jab. Teddy Atlas calls the, the jab, the table setter, everything comes off the back of it. Timing, range, distance for the right hand, and Mensa has used it well thus far. It's drawn blood from the nose of Julian Luck. Luck missing with the left hook, and Mensa waiting patiently for his opportunity to strike. Just trying to get Luck to step into space and counter, he does so just there. Uh, look of concern from the corner men of Julian Luck. Who now reticently pours out the jab. And it is difficult to throw with conviction once you've been hurt because you're forever wary of what may be coming back your way. But Luck continues to hold his shape and box. True resolve and grit. And he's done incredibly well to stay in this one so far. As Mensa waiting for his opportunity, comes forward behind the jab again. Hasn't been able to mount anything serious in the last 30 seconds or so. Just grazed the chin of luck with the right hand there. 10 seconds to go in this second round. And luck again comes forward. Lands the jab, both men exchange jabs, and well, round two to a close, and two standing eight counts for Luck will mean that he is behind on the scorecards. My word, what grit and determination he has shown to see both of them being pretty torrid rounds at times, to see them through. As they say, no guts, no glory in boxing, as much as the technical skill aspect of it is paramount. There's also something that just comes deep from within a fighter that can't be taught. And Julian Luck has shown that in abundance through the last four minutes. And well, he'll have to dig deep in this last round as the owner of White Collar Boxing London, Scott Borthwick, leaning through the ropes to give the man in red corner a bit of salient advice, a man of much experience as an amateur himself. And that advice will be valuable if, if Julian Luck can take heed of it and put it into practice. So Luck now coming forward with conviction behind the jab now. What a performance he's shown. Really getting that jab to work. Comes in close and holds way Mensa. And goodness me, Julian Luck is taking the impetus here. Nice smile from Mensa. Couple of shots around the back of the head. Luck just getting a little over exuberant, but certainly if he's got a second win, we're witnessing it right now. 
Luck with a bit between his teeth. Certainly didn't expect this. That points in round number one that we'd be here now. Mensa still calm and composed. There's a shot to the body from Luck lands. Then the jab. And he sparked into life, would you believe? Mensa trying to parry and counter there. Lands a, a right hand, but well, just glanced at the face of Luck. And that one landed with a bit more solidity. Got the impression that Mensa feels he can close the show at any point, but he's well, he's not done it so far. Luck still in there. Jab there again, snaps the head back of the man in the red corner. Better head movement from Luck that time. Landing a jab to the body. Well, he's head out the way of the return fire from Mensa. And now Luck again taking the impetus as Mensa having to use his feet and head movement to get himself out of trouble. Certainly, Julia Luck's round so far. And seeing the man midway through round two, you wouldn't have thought that was possible. Incredible show of resolve and spirit from the man in red as Mensa again stalks forward. Pouring the jab out, looking for the opening. Luck flicking the jab out, sees the contest out, and well, it's unlikely that he would have picked this on the scorecards with those two standing eight counts, but he certainly took the last round. Just gave Way Mensa a little bit of food for thought towards the end of that contest, which he largely dominated. Superb resilience and resolve shown by Julian Luck. And with that, we will go to the judges' scorecards.
last hand from Battlestar. His head movement into a corkscrew uppercut to start. Sinclair responds, and already we've got a fight on our hands. Nice sharp head movement from Battlestar. Sinclair from South Africa. Battlestock, Rulox Bridge, a builder. Battlestock, beginning to open up. Nice uppercut down the middle, right? From Sinclair. Well, sitting on the edge of punching distance and springing into life. Uh, jab and then the right hand, working really nicely. He's landed some decent shots in this first round. Sinclair, little cruder, work from him. Again, sharp two punch combination from Battlestock. Has he got Sinclair wrapped a little bit here? Fire those shots in the middle, left hook lands, and there goes the belt. Exciting end and drama to close round number one out. needs to take a bit more in the way of initiative in this second round. He'll just second to the punch occasionally in the opening round. Bavastock took his chances. Worked in and out with the feet well. Good punch. Combination variety too. Second round, away we go. what Sinclair needs to do, just take the initiative. Try and put Ballastock under a little bit of pressure, not quite give him so much space to work. Narrowly misses with the uppercut. Sinclair swinging away, crashing the gloves against the forearms of the high tight guard from Paul Ballastock. Too bad. You see Ballastock again, just looking to try and manufacture that gap, find a different angle. Covering up well, Sinclair wins the shots in. Ballastock covering up well. A bit of blood from the nose of Sinclair now. And will that impede the? Breathing of a man in blue as he walks into another stiff right hand, then an uppercut from Baverstock. Dips to the left and fires that trademark uppercut through the gap. Referee Seamus Dunn having a look closely there. Was there a bit of holding and hitting perhaps as Baverstock crashes in that lead uppercut? Then Sinclair responds with the uppercut through the centre. Terrific. 
traditional exchange between these two. It's back and forth at the London Irish Centre in Camden. And the crowd on their feet for these two men. Two pretty gruelling rounds come to a close. Sinclair spits the mouth guard out in his face, showing the signs of battle early. Baverstock in the red corner, perhaps slightly more in control, perhaps the fresher of the two. All will tell in this third and final round. on a white collar boxing London night where the crowd have just risen to the occasion as much as the boxers do and it always gets pretty loud in this fantastic auditorium battle stop trying to land the check left hook didn't land by much went with a lead one this time it's an interesting shot there are not many throw that lead left hook and he, he throws it pretty well Sinclair covered up, Landed a nice shot to the body there. That was good from Baverstock again, fainting with a jab, landing a shot to the body. Again, Sinclair just managing to muffle the effects of the right hand through the guard. Baverstock now showing signs of fatigue, the mouth wide open. Taking big gulps of air as he dips down to his left hand side, but Sinclair catches him on the way in. Nice jab again from Baverstock. Sinclair responds, but the man in red covering up, launching into that left hook of his own. Sinclair missing with the right hand. And again, these two running on empty now. 30 seconds on the clock still. Who can go to the well, dig a little deeper and try and find something to put a punctuation mark on this third and final round. Babasok with the right hand. Shoots the uppercut through the middle. In the two, almost taking out a mutual breather. Circling, sizing each other up as they come together for one last exchange. Sinclair with the uppercut through the middle. They touch gloves and... Well, you can't ask for any more than that. These two combatants left everything in the squared circle and both men can be extremely proud of their efforts.
team firstly fighting in the red corner from Wimbledon, it's Michael the Flint! And across the ring fighting out of the blue corner from Cambridge, it's Rich! And away we go. Round one. Pet, the considerably taller of the two men. White and blue. Currently holding centre ring. The canology from Pet in the early going. Just sticks the tongue out at his man. White works in security for the energy sector. Always had a good start. Catches Pet with a decent right hand. Just caught his attention. Just parrying and jabbing too. So boxing's helping him recover from Middlesbrough's recent relegation from the Premier League. I hate to say it was inevitable, but. Michael Beck, born in South East London, splits his spare time between playing a bit of golf, football and cricket. Lost a fair bit of weight in this process by all accounts as well. The two men that have seen their lives outside of the boxing ring enhanced by the process of the training camp. Fight night, of course, the biggest test of all for these two men. It's Pet just missing with the right hand. White again, just inching his way into distance, parrying that jab. Not easy to get the timing on that parrying. Why seem to have done it pretty astutely through this first round. It's clearly something he's worked hard on. Not a great deal to split them through round number one. Occasionally you see round one as a sort of feeling out process and things in round two can be rather different as fighters feel that they've readied themselves and they kind of burst into life. That's exactly what's happening here. Michael Beck just trying to put a bit of early pressure on Rich White, see what he's made of. keeping that guard high and tight and you know, while Pets had the ostensible height and reach advantage hasn't been able to really use the jab effectively such has been the good parrying work of Rich White just caught that jab at almost every opportunity that's meant that it's been difficult for Pet to keep that range and gap between them and work at long distance it's giving White the opportunity to just get inside on occasions and work away to the body into the head with combinations of his own there's the parry again from White 
making life uncomfortable for Michael Peck. More difficult than it seems to keep the shorter opponents at distance. Looks the easy option, just keep the jab out, keep things long. If you've got an opponent that's got a few tricks in the book, can work their way onto the inside, can make life very uncomfortable as the taller man. You need to be able to extend those arms for the opponent to feel the full force of the whack, and if they're coming up close to you, smothering your work. That was better from Peck. Landed the right hand that time. Certainly Rich Wright has posed him a conundrum or two through these first four minutes as round two ticks by in a flash. on Michael Pett, but Pett has responded well in the early goings of round number three. Both men putting their foot down and not relinquishing a backward step. It's warmed up at a, a slower pace than some of the other contests tonight, but it's warmed up nicely. Both of these men are in a position where they're comfortable with the power in front of them and they're landing shots. Really close contest as again Peck swings and misses from range. Nice parry encounter from Rich White. Pops the jab out, misses narrowly, moves off to his left hand side. And again, Peck's a little bit wild with the right hand, just uh, glanced the head guard of White and spun it around momentarily. In the corner of Michael Peck just telling him to breathe, and well, it might sound like obvious advice can be the simplest things that you forget to do in the heat of battle those deep breaths that composure staying relaxed under pressure all so so important to keeping that heart rate low keeping your wits about you not tensing up using extra energy if you do all of those things as that head guards giving rich right problems again clubs pet back with a stiff right hand as he came in there so another readjustment with 45 seconds left still on the clock in round number three. And that will go by in a flash ringside, but you better believe those two guys in the ring. Michael Pett looking like he's starting to run on empty. Now 45 seconds will feel like a lot longer as he now parries the jab of White. Catches a couple of hooks of White working his way into distance. walked himself into a cul de sac there, just turned his own back to the ropes momentarily. And luckily again, Michael Peck didn't take advantage. Perhaps those fatigued legs of Peck, the arms feeling heavy now. And he's eaten a stiff right hand from White, who just lands and backs off. Moments to go here in this final round. And there it is.
Your referee has scored this contest 29 points to 28 points in favour of your winner fighting out of the blue corner. Michael Beck just knew he hadn't quite done enough there, you could see the look on his face, but he was gracious in defeat and Rich White boxed brilliantly as the rounds went on and he takes victory. Challenge Cup Final is upon us and two men who arrived in this position using different tactics. Rattigan was bludgeoning force and will to gain an early stoppage over board Joe Austin. Stephen Christian, a more carefully nuanced approach, a more economical approach. The question, who will have more in the tank? Two minute rounds, remember, and one of these men walked away with the inaugural Challenge Cup here at the London Irish Centre in Camden Square. Challenge Cup final awaits one of these two men. Stephen Christian in the red corner. Winning by decision over Nick Terry earlier on this evening. Noel Rattigan, a bludgeoning victory over Joe Austin in two rounds. Who has got more in the tank? And argue that even though Christian has fought one more round, it was a more economical approach that maybe has seen him with a bit more in the tank. Rattigan, although box only two rounds, put a lot into those two rounds. So this one as much about longevity as it is about the skill levels in front of us. Rattigan has started a little more sensibly than he did against Austin in the first contest. Nice stiff left hand comes through the guard. He's a man that does like to throw lots of punches. It's 
got a high work rate intrinsically. Christian just picking his moments. So far, these two men standing and trading. Rattigan pads away to the body. Christian trying to tuck up behind that tight high guard, absorbing some of the shots from Rattigan. Wonder whether he snuck a look through the curtains and saw the victory earlier on this evening and the man who's in front of him just to get a measure of what he might be facing over the next six minutes. Rattigan again clubbing away to the body, throwing an awful lot of punches. Well, we saw what Christian did to Nick Terich to absorb those shots, made him punch himself out and came on strong in the second half of the contest. Is that the plan here? We've seen that Rattigan is a dangerous prospect. Putting a lot into this opening round, Noel Rattigan. And we say based on that that he's probably ahead on the scorecards going into round number two. And is this a smart long term game plan from Stephen Christian? Facebook Live as we speak and just speaking to the owner of White Collar Boxing London Scott Borthwick and saying well is Rattigan going to punch himself out is that Stephen Christian's plan he said well Rattigan won't punch himself out he'll just keep going and going and going kind of guy that we say give him 500 burpees he'll do it he's clubbing away that work rate still going from the Irishman Christian just hasn't really been able to start going up through the gears. Find his timing and range. He's just looking a little bit befuddled so far. Sometimes very difficult when you have an opponent that's all over you. That's better work from Christian. So a ripple of applause and support from the crowd here in Camden. Crashes the right hand into the body and then to the head. Good work from the man in red, but still Rattigan. Pause forward, that relentless pressure style. It's not always pretty, but it is effective. But it's a sting just starting to go out of the shots of the Irishman. Still landing clean, but how much is behind these? Rattigan starts to blow a little heavier now. Swings a couple of times and misses. Good head movement from Christian. And he's backed himself into a corner. And that's good work to the body from the Irishman. It's an uppercut for his troubles. Really good contest. It's starting to heat up nicely. Just wherever Christian goes, Rattigan is just in front of him, hunting him down. Mentally can be so draining as well. Second round down and a uh, pretty relentless pace that Rattigan seems to set from start to finish. He's breathing heavily now and no wonder. With all those extra rounds in the gym, the runs on the road, the skipping. It's for moments like this. Two more minutes separates one of these men from the Challenge Cup. Will it be Noel Rattigan in the blue corner? Will it be Stephen Christian in the red? Oh, 
So away we go. Ratigan as we expect in forward gear. We know there's no other way. Can Christian find an answer? Trying to battle his way off the ropes. He knows how crucial the next two minutes are. It's all been for this tonight. Such a difficult exercise going through the adrenaline peaks and troughs of warming up for a contest. Fighting, then going backstage, warming down. An hour's rest, warming up again, getting the adrenaline back to performance level. And then going through this kind of attritional process. And I'll tell you what, there'll be two tired men tomorrow. There'll be a lot of sleeping going on this weekend, that is for sure. Completely different process to just having one fight one night and these men will have worked extra hard and this is where the tanks and the reserves start to empty and it's just who wants it a little bit more it's not going to be pretty from here on in can one of these men make it effective Rattigan walked forward south port looking to land the big left hand lobs it against the side of the head of Christian, who lands a right hand in response, and another, and a third. Now works away to the body. Double jabbing, almost a, a southport right jab from Christian there as he hangs on. Around 10 seconds to go in the third and final round. The corner of Christian willing him forward. One last rally, but it's Rattigan. Looks intent on putting the exclamation mark on the contest. Three rounds, done and dusted. Twice over for these men tonight. And we will go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. And one of these men will walk away with the Challenge Cup trophy.
introducing to you first the final of the red So three two-minute rounds. Rob English in the red corner. Fought back here in March. Back here solo. Chartered accountant from up north, but lives in London. In the blue corner. Solo's got long arms. It's uh, not as tall as English, but that jab seems to reach an awful long way. It's always dangerous about Rob English. There's not a lot of tail on the right hand, and he likes to throw it as a counter shot. So he'll sit back, and you see the front foot of English is quite a long way in front of his head, which gives the impression that he's further away than he actually is. Because it's the front foot that's the, the, the measure of how far away a fighter is from you. Sometimes you get the impression that you can hit him, and then bang, he pulls the trigger, just as we see there, right on cue. It's an early warning for Akia Solo. He's clubbing in, but unable to hit English clean. He's just rocking and rolling on the ropes, using his footwork to get out of space. And a solo just switching to southpaw momentarily. See what sort of conundrum that poses English. Might make the right hand counter a little easier. Tries to throw it there. And the solo now back to orthodox. English now stalking, cutting off the ring. Comfortable on the back foot, usually. He's just gone hunting towards the last 10 or 15 seconds of round number one. Not a great deal in it so far. Solo just try and turn the heat up a little bit on English and see what he's made of. So far, English has been on the front foot. See who's currently holding centre. an attack with the right hand, English just keeping himself guarded. Always defensively minded, see there, just keeping the glove high up by the right chin, inching backwards with the feet. It just helps to take the sting out of any shots coming his way. 
See there, just going to ride those shots on the shoulders and the gloves. And the solo really wants to try and cut the ring off and try and pin English onto the ropes to unleash some of his own combinations. Not quite happening for him at distance. Every time he tries to jab at range, English is just fleet of foot enough to inch himself back out of range. Solo, really, you feel needs to go hunting a little bit here. Try and put some pressure on his man. Push him back into a smaller space where he's got a little bit less room to operate. See what he can do there. Because we know that English is harder to hit upstairs. And sometimes in that case, they say aim for the chest. The chest doesn't move as much as the head does. It's a little conundrum for Aki Solo to unpick through round number two. Solo has got to try and take the initiative here against English. And swinging in, and again, English is dipping under the, the left hook. Boxes his way back into this too. Now English is cutting off the ring, looking for an opening. And Solo landing a right hand there. That was better for the man in blue. of a non-event this third round, not a great deal thrown or landed by either party. English now coming in with the right hand, the solo just dips off to the left-hand side, managed to avoid it, goes back with two of his own, but again, he's made to miss. Both men finding it difficult to land cleanly on each other. Now 15 seconds to go in this third and final round. And the solo now hangs on, now slightly petering out. Whereas English just launches into a two-punch combination. Again, a solo hangs on. And there it is. Not a great deal to write home about. Both men had spells of success, but we'll go to the judges' scorecards to see whose work they prefer.
the business end of proceedings in what's been a, an exciting night of action here in London. The white collar boxing London light heavyweight title on the line. And Ed Cornick, first man into the ring from Somerset, works as a policy advisor in Westminster and he's an Arsenal fan too. So a bit of silverware for his club at the end of their season. Can he pick up some gold and red of his own in the form of that light heavyweight belt tonight. making his way to the ring with some traditional music and a pretty good fan base as well he's boxed here before and this is his moment to put a stamp on his white collar boxing London career one of these men will walk away with a light heavyweight title his fellow Frenchman Mide de Degbe in his corner former holder of the Super middleweight, white collar boxing title. fight with white collar boxing London he will have learned lessons upon lessons in his time in this process the tall rangy Ed Cornick in the red corner four two minute rounds remember and Ali just landed a sneaky right through the middle Cornick has the nails to hang on known that at range this one will be a tricky proposition and he would have worked on parrying and slipping that long rangey jab of Cornix looking to counter on the inside of his shots when he can good work from the Frenchman referee Seamus Dunn 
makes his presence felt, just separates the two men. Cornick back behind the jab, Olive parrying it away, countering with the right hand, now tucking up tight. Cornick bangs away to the ribs. Cornick, a policy advisor in Westminster, an area of London that's seen so much trouble and turmoil in the last two or three months. Olive works in the commercial real estate industry. Narrowly missed with the right hand counter but follows up with a couple of good hooks. The corner comes straight back at him. Nothing to split them so far. Expect them to try and pace themselves with a little more thought, given that they've got the extra two minutes to go. And close the end of round number one and some food for thought for both men in the interim between round one and two. Still three rounds to go, remember. Doesn't sound like much, an extra round, but goodness me, it can make an awful lot of difference. Speaking to some of the amateurs at the top end of the game, they fight three three-minute rounds and then switching to five rounds in the World Series boxing format. And those extra two, they say what a huge, huge difference it makes and what a, a totally different dimension it has to the sport. So be under no illusions, that extra round takes a lot of preparing for. to keep things at range. His long, little stretch arms strong like limbs when he throws the right hand and the jab out. They seem to go for miles. Olive springing in and out with the feet. Knows he's got to be quick with the feet if he's to get into range and get his shots off. And so far, it looks like he's trying to counter the work of Cornick when he really steps in and commits. He's trying to get Cornick to step into his space. Clever and patient work from the Frenchman. Good head movement too. It's Cornick who's busier. So far, I think too impactful has landed in this second round. Now they go to work. Cornick firing a four punch combination. Olive slipping all of those, trying to come back with a left hook of his own. Lands up the one-two, short on the inside. Then goes to work to the body. Olive using his strength to just bust up, corner back off the ropes. And that takes energy and that can sap your reserves. Doesn't want to do too much of that if he can help it. Whoa, long, wild overhand right from Olive. Didn't miss by much though. Couple of landed a bit more successfully that time. Shame is done. Just a quick warning for shots around the back of the head. Right smile from Matthew Olive as he just chipped her right hand. At the end of round number two, we're halfway through this title fight. Not a great deal to split the contestants so far. Cornick with the work rate, Olive just perhaps with the precision and nice counter work. It all depends what you're looking for.
officially over the halfway mark here. It's been a really interesting contest so far. As Ollie just landed a shot, which spun the head guard of uh, Ed Cornick around. trying to work his way out of the clinch with a few short shots on the inside to the body. Cornick again trying to keep this one low and at range. Remember this one draws on, just feel that Ollie's starting to get a little bit closer. Just occasionally signs of frustration for the Frenchman. Better work, but as soon as he does get in close, Cornick using that now to hang on, pull him in close knowing the referee will separate them. Good tactics from the man in red, making hard work from, for Matthew Olive. Well, we've seen examples of fighters with the reach advantage not using it to their advantage earlier on this evening, but they call it. He's doing a really good job of it here, using the assets that he's got to make Matthew Ali fight to his game plan. But the Frenchman is game, and he's still very much in this. The question is, can he start to impose his game plan on Ed Cornick? Can he start to will himself forward? Ships a right hand, trying to work his way in now. Ali lands a right hand on the inside. Try not to let Cornick hang on. Some insinuations of a, a low blow there. Cornick just momentarily makes a complaint, but it's the head guard again. by pretty quickly indeed and uh, already both of these men staring the fourth and final round in the face the light heavyweight white collar boxing title on the line Matthew Lee taking advice from his corner man Mide de Degbe Ed Cornick just receiving a last drink of water all these two men had to leave everything in the squared circle holding centre ring again, trying to keep Olive at bay behind the jab, Olive bustling his way in, Ooh, walks into a pretty stiff shot there, finish the combination on the jab. Almost a wry smile from Olive a moment ago, just knows how awkward an opponent Cornick is, just those long, awkward limbs, the way the jab kind of fires out from the hip, the right hand too, that was better from the Frenchman. Parries the jab, tries to come in, classy right hand, comes through and chin checks Cornick, who took it well, and now goes on the offensive too. Couldn't have caught Ed Cornick much cleaner than that of the man in red took it strongly and stood firm. 
Olive listening to instructions from his corner man, Dedekbe. Cornick lands along left hook. Olive comes crashing in again. And again, Cornick hangs on to just nullify the pressure with 20 seconds on the clock in this fourth and final round. Three-punch combination, missed the first two, but then the jab landed and rocked the head back of Olive. And now Ed Cornick looking to really put some spice on this finish to round number four. And Olive trying to respond. Right hand left to a combo on the bell. Cornick looks wide-eyed. The bell goes and really, really nice to see a good show of sportsmanship. Everyone applauds. The referee Seamus Dunn does too. Excellent display of skill and will in the white collar boxing ring. And one of these two men, of course, will walk away with the title. Describes himself as hailing from the Arctic tundra of Edmonton, Canada. He trains on the old Kent Road in London. So we really see all corners of the world. Alex Lee continuing, or looking to continue his undefeated record. He says by dancing like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. Well, good luck to him. He starts in the red corner tonight. His second outing is Will Bartholomew. Portsmouth fan, agency sales manager at News UK.
Introducing to you firstly fighting out of the grand corner. All the way from Edmonton, Canada. So, Alex Lee in the red corner, Will Bartholomew in the blue. Three two-minute rounds. Pretty feisty start. Bartholomew landed a right hand over the top. Head guards come awry there. I wonder for a second why he was he pirouetting around to face the referee, and then it became all too clear. does decide to come forward, he does so in such a relentless, swarming, unpredictable manner. It would be quite uh, unnerving for Will Bartholomew so to cover up on occasions and not an easy opposition to face. Lee just comes in with these quick, fast, unusual combinations. See here, just waiting for his moment to strike. When he decides to go, he's gone. Oh, he walks into a stiff right hand that time. And that hurt him. Lovely counter from Bartholomew. And you know what? Just occasionally, that's exactly what you need when you're being swarmed by a fighter. Just to land something solid to get their respect. Just try and make them think twice before coming in. That's giving you a little bit of extra time to think. That's far. Didn't deter Alex Lee that time. And he was on top for most of the first round, but that shot from Will Bartholomew, the standout punch of the round. Bartholomew now trying to hold his ground and respond when Lee does so. Covers up well this time, that was better from him. Bartholomew's landed the right hand a couple of times. I guess because of Alex Lee's forward momentum, just magnifies the impact of that right hand when it does land. He's going to try and pull the trigger a little bit sooner because Lee can dart into range at such speed as soon as he senses that Lee is going to come forward, I feel as if Bartholomew needs to 
let the hands go, try and land something impactful before Lee has a chance to get on the inside and start throwing those four, five and six punch combinations. Lee goes to the body that time, now opens up to body and then head. Little uppercuts coming through the middle, don't think anything too impactful got through. Bartholomew hasn't used the jab too much through the contest so far. That's nice combination punching from Lee. He's got to try and get that jab working, try and keep Lee at distance. seconds to go in this second round as Lee tries to step laterally to give himself an angle unable to find one though and round two comes to a close just one more to go chess match at times in this one but now these two go to war and I think Bartholomew has hurt Lee in one of these exchanges Getting right into that exchange the two men just come out of it to just take a momentary mutual breather as Lee whacks the right hand to the body Bartholomew now circling to his left going to gather himself to go again with the Pompey socks on the big Portsmouth fan in blue Bartholomew missed narrowly there with the right hand. And Lee landing a short right on the inside. Bartholomew responds, the two winging away. cut off the ring a little bit better than he is doing just following his man around a little bit or he created a nice angle for himself there yeah. it was a nice right hand left took combination from Lee both landed but following you took them well to finish the round from Lee I think it was a slip there and the referee Seamus Dunn agrees well, before proceedings have a chance to restart they are put to a close well, Alex Lee and Will Bartholomew 
box to a decision and we'll find out what that decision is in just a couple of moments time.
So Seguencia in the red corner. And Sridhar in the blue. Short right hand landed from Sridhar. Sequencia with the jab. Move your head, yes. Head mover. Went to a fast movement early. Sridhar comes forwards. Pretty sharp with that right hand, Sridhar. And he's switch hitting as well. And that's just given. So we're going to see a couple of things to think about. Changing up the angles and the starts. So we're going to see trying to find a bit of timing and room for that counter right hand. Sridhar has been non-stop darting from left to right so far and that's made him a very hard target to line up and find timing and distance against because he hasn't stopped moving and that's a nice stiff right hand through the guard that time Seguencia took it well Oof, stiff right hand there from the man from Ecuador Rock Sridhar it's back into his heels for a moment. Oh, and a one just after the bell. Didn't think any intention. Sometimes fighters can get caught in the heat of the moment. Sridhar just having his uh, access band removed there. I don't think he needs that this evening. Sridhar just been first to the punch so far in this contest. Sequenci has landed a couple of nice counters, but so far it's been Sridhar that's just been able to get those shots off and disrupt the rhythm and timing of the man from Ecuador. Left hook, right hand combination. And then Sridhar moves away. That's good work from the man in blue. Of course, it's all about landing those shots and then getting the feet out of range. Because if you don't, what, what happens is what you see just there. You can get caught on the way out. And these two really going to work here. Really right hand clattered against the chin of Sridhar. Seems to be okay with the power in front of him. These two men just swinging at each other. With absolute content and no respect for the other man and what they're throwing back. Just a bit rock'em sock'em robots in there. Nice short uppercut on the inside from Seguencia. Sridhar took it well. He covers up momentarily and Seguencia, well, just momentarily had the upper hand. Back comes Sridhar. 
incredible work rate through round number two for these two men. About 30 seconds still to go in round number two, unbelievably. I feel like a long time given what they've just thrown at each other. In this past minute and a half, the Sridhar now winging forward with some wide, loopy hooks. Seguencia comes through the middle with a jab, and then another, and a third. Well, you would have thought somebody would have taken the impetus to hold so far, but taking all that time, right, the, the full distance of the round for somebody to grab on. And round two comes to a frantic close. So again, the same pattern as you, Sridhar, taking the initiative and landing first. Seguenza covering up high and tight. Waits for his moment to battle back. That was a sensible combination of defence and offence from the man in red. Hands up, yes, hands up! The jab from Sridhar. He's smothering his own work somewhat, though. He should just plant those feet when he throws the jab and the one-two. Not come forward too much if his opponent's not moving. The crowd in the London Irish Centre has just thinned out a tiny bit. There's pockets of the crowd come to watch individual fighters and once their time is done, it's time for the celebrations to get to begin and the pockets of the cohort here will go and hit the town, but the ones that remain are still in full voice. Sridhar clubs the right hand against the head of Seguencia. Again, Seguencia now covers up. Wasn't able to evade that right hand, though. The work rate of Sridhar, is it just edging it for the man in blue? Well, still 30 seconds to go. What's been a frantic and high-paced contest. These two men just swinging away. Clubbing with everything that they've got. Sridhar tries to hold on. Seguencia trying to throw, trying to work his way out of that clinch. 10 seconds in the third and final round as Sridhar clubs away on the inside to the head of Seguencia. The head guard has come undone. I don't think we'll have much time for anything by way of a restart once this head guard has been rearranged. I think the bells are about to go anyway, in all honesty. As the crowd cheer and the cries ring out here in Camden. One hook to the body from Seguencia, and that is all she wrote.
favor of your winner, fighting out of the... say it's a long, long road to Tipperary and Michael Meany has had a long, long wait this evening. Final fight of the night and he second to last man to step through the ropes this evening. Go up around Camden area, so this is home to him. He works with cyber security and says hopefully he'll be good at seeing incoming threats and countering them. Planner from Dublin in Ireland. Recently moved to London for more uh, permanent job position. So battle of the Irish here at the London Irish Centre to finish a terrific night of white collar boxing action. And this white collar boxing London rules bout will be contested over three, two minute rounds. And so for our final fight this evening. Introducing to you firstly fighting out of the red corner from Tipperary Ireland, it's Michael the Hunter Mini. And across the ring fighting out of the blue corner from Dublin Ireland, it's Two men now living in London by way of Ireland. The perfect venue for them to settle the final disputes. Michael Meany in the red corner has made a good start. Aiden Rowe taking his time. Nice head movement of footwork to get out of the corner there. That's a straight right off the back of it too. Now he goes to work, stiff right hand, and he's got me in all sorts of trouble here. There's no banging on the canvas, ladies and gentlemen. No banging on the canvas during the contest. Well, standing A counter administered by referee Seamus Dunn, and rightly so. What a good start for Michael Meany. He was just hurt by a couple of those stiff right hands, and Aidan Rowe has made a statement early in round number one. Comes over the top again with the right hand. Meany just a little bit reticent now, and understandably so. Never easy when you've been caught cold early on in a contest. The sensible thing to do would be just to try and take a bit of time, get a bit of space to clear your head. Of course, he's only got six minutes in front of him, so part of you, of course, is 
willing you forward, saying, make a fight of this. And again, good footwork from Aidan Rowe. Just right hand again lands for the man in blue. And he's hurting Mina with these shots. Rowe throwing that right hand without very much to tell. That makes it very hard to read for Meany. That was the bell at the end of round one and a good start for the man in the blue corner from Ireland. Michael Meany's got some work to do. start in round number one for Aidan Rowe. Can he continue to apply the pressure on Michael Meany? Nice jab. And the right hand and every time Meany walks into one of those the head rocks back and signs that one really clean crisp shot from Rowe. And Meany could just start to unravel. Row just again throws the right hand with so little tell or inference it's difficult to read. Nice footwork again from the man in blue. Lamini showing patience and outwardly, well, I'm sure he's hurting in points, he's unflustered and he just keeps his composure, keeps his shape. Trying to work the jab, keep to the fundamentals of what he's learned over these last two or three months. Certainly that becomes more difficult the more under fire you are. And again, Rowe, just dipping under the, the hook, getting himself back into the centre of the ring. Coming forward, working behind the jab. At some point you feel meany, if he's going to make something of this, he's going to have to just... Perhaps throw caution to the wind, take a risk and don't work his way in. That was a good jab from the man in red. And every time he steps forward, just the counter right hand. And I suppose when he watches this back, maybe he'll just start to work on head movement going forwards. Just the legs of Meany just starting to betray him slightly, not quite as steady on his feet as he might like to be as a right hand lands again and just a stumble for Meany as he goes back to his corner and they'll be having a close look at him to make sure he's okay sometimes boxers, in fact often boxers braver than they care to admit and they'll carry on through pain barriers that are alien to most of us and I don't think Michael Meany's quite in that territory. He's certainly a man that's been hit a few times and hit hard. He's showing incredible bravery to still be standing and still be in there.
And the final round of a terrific night of action here in London. Michael Meany has shown spirit and resolve to stick in this one, but the right hand for Aidan Rowe has been the money shot this evening. And he's landed it at almost every opportunity. But Meany now comes forward, determined to make a fight out of this. The Irish spirit. And again, Rowe, stiff two-punch combination, both on the button. Meany now comes back at him, trying to put some pressure on Rowe, get him pinned in the corner. And a stiff right hand from Rowe there. Comes forward with it again now, trying to pile on the pressure. Will Meany stand up to this? The right hand came in, and referee Seamus Dunn was working really hard to get in between them, and how Meany has stood on his feet. After taking two or three on the side of the referee's head, and Rowe is eyeing up his man carefully. Will he try and pounce on this opportunity with still around 45 seconds to go here in this final round? Michael Meany back in the centre, still on his feet. Rowe looking for an opportunity. Measures with a jab, puts the right hand behind it. Twice in succession, left hook, right hand. These are hurtful shots. And if there's one thing that Meany will have earned, it's Aidan Rowe's respect after this, because he's hit him with everything he's got here. And he's just not been able to budge him. The legs have started to betray Michael Meany, and I think he's been saved by the belt. A valiant effort, and he takes the gloves off, goes back to his corner. And he can certainly be proud of the resolve he's shown to stick in there. But we will go to the judges' scorecards for the final results.